BBC News with Sue Montgomery. The US Coast Guard says presumed human remains have been recovered from the wreckage of the submersible that imploded on a voyage to the Titanic earlier this month. All five passengers on board were killed. Medical officials will analyse the remains, as Peter Bowes reports. Debris from the sea floor is now being examined by investigators from several international jurisdictions with the hope of determining the cause of the accident. It includes large pieces of metal resembling parts of the Titan's white hull and landing skids designed for touching down on the seabed. The Coast Guard said there was still a substantial amount of work to be done to understand what led to the catastrophic loss of the Titan and to ensure a similar tragedy does not occur again. French police have arrested 11 people in another night of protests in the suburb of Paris where a teenage boy was shot dead by a police officer. Cars have again been set ablaze in Nanterre and fireworks aimed at officers. President Macron has appealed for calm and described the close-range shooting as unforgivable. Mornia Labsi is an anti-racism campaigner in Nongter who knows the teenager's family. She says someone must take responsibility. I saw the video and what I see is a policeman shooting a young man for nothing. I was angry. You have to know that the mother has got one son. And of course, she was very sad. But in the same time, she talked with the institutions, the mayor of the town, and she said to him, my son is dead, but I don't want anyone dead in these conditions. The pop star Madonna has postponed her world tour after contracting an infection. The 64-year-old fell ill at the weekend and spent several days in intensive care. US media is reporting that the singer was rushed to hospital after being found in an unresponsive condition. Sophie Long is following the story. We don't have many details at the moment. What we know, according to her manager, who posted on Instagram, is that on Saturday, Madonna developed what he called a serious bacterial infection. And as a result, she she spent several days in the intensive care unit. Now, we are told that her health is improving and that she is expected to make a full recovery. But at the moment, she is still undergoing medical care. And as a result, her team have decided to suspend all commitments, which, of course, includes her celebration tour. Joe Biden, who's seeking re-election, has delivered a speech in Chicago pitching his economic vision for the US. Branding it Bidenomics, he said it was another way of saying restore the American dream. His plans include taxing the rich to fund areas deemed critical to national security. BBC News. An armed man has been shot dead outside the US consulate in the Saudi city of Jeddah. A security guard of Nepali origin was also killed in the gunfight. Saudi officials said the man had turned up in a car and walked towards the building carrying a firearm. The US State Department confirmed the reports and said no Americans had been harmed in the incident. Malta has lifted its total ban on abortions, allowing terminations to be carried out if the mother's life is in danger. It was the only EU member state where abortions were illegal under all circumstances. The bill was approved unanimously. More than 100 million people across Canada and the United States are under air quality alerts as smoke from wildfires in Quebec drifts westward. Canada's biggest city, Toronto, had the worst air of all major cities in the world on Wednesday, as Jessica Murphy reports. The city's iconic CN Tower is veiled in smoke, and Toronto residents are being warned they can expect smoky air until at least Thursday morning. It's a reminder of the fire still burning in northeastern Ontario and Quebec. Quebec remains the hot spot in the country, with 112 active fires and smoke plumes spreading as far as the United States and Europe. This is officially Canada's worst wildfire season on record. Conditions behind the blazes, a warmer and drier spring than normal, are projected to continue throughout the summer. Scientists have developed a new tool that uses artificial intelligence to look for early signs of dementia. They say it will ease the pressure on assessment services and allow treatment to start earlier. The tool uses a virtual character which can be accessed on a device at home to talk with the patient, whose language and speech patterns are then analysed by AI to look for signs of memory diseases. BBC News.